Hey guys, welcome to Drone Doc episode six. We're gonna upgrade this budget build to digital FPV video. Let's get started. So this budget build was pretty cheap. It was about 230 bucks. Um, this is gonna be a nice upgrade to the budget build. We're gonna get 720p streaming straight to our DJI goggles. Uh, this is a nice addition because it's nice and small and compact and it'll fit right on the top plate. So the first thing we need to do guys is get the top plate off because this digital system is going to fit right underneath the top plate here and we're going to route the antenna out the back side. So we'll take our 2 mil driver and remove the top plate. Next, we'll just cut the zip tie and remove that antenna. Now my plan to put this on the top plate underneath the top plate is actually to mount it with some double-sided tape right underneath the top plate and we'll run some zip ties through it. But before we do that, um, the original standoffs that came with it are 25 millimeters tall and there's not gonna be enough space between the flight controller stack and the top plate. So if you, if you do an upgrade to this build and you buy this Vista system, you'll need to purchase these 35 millimeter standoffs. And again, everything that we have here on the table that we purchase will be down in the video description, the Vista unit and these 35 millimeter standoffs. So we'll remove the existing ones and then we'll remove the VTX. So once your standoffs are off, pretty easy. You're just going to remove these uh, nuts and remove the video transmitter and get that desoldered off the flight controller. So now it's just a matter of removing the camera cable and the VTX cable. I'll just go ahead and clean those guys up. So if you guys are following along and you've built this drone yourself, uh, I hope that you guys have kept the flight controller cable that came with it. Um, this will plug directly into your flight controller and then you'll cut off the cables and you'll mount it to the Vista unit. But if you were not uh, following along and you have built this, but you do wanna upgrade your Cadex Vista system uh, from an analog video setup to a digital video setup, then the Cadex Vista system actually comes with wires and it directly plugs into that flight controller. So you can use either cable I'm going to use this cable because it's labeled in the diagram and we can easily color coordinate the wires for soldering. So right here on the back of the flight controller there's a plug and it's labeled here on our diagram and it says 5 volts ground, TX4, RX4, video ground, and then S bus. And since we're running Crossfire system on our radio, we're not actually using the DJI remote, we're going to end up removing that S bus wire and that is this purple wire right here. So we're going to depin that from both sides and then cut strip and tin and get ready for soldering. So we're just going to cut these wires off here. I'll leave them a little bit long to trim them to fit. And then this purple wire, like we mentioned, uh, is the one that we need to remove. Now you can either cut this, um, but I actually like to take our razor blade here and lift up that tab and pull that S-bus wire out. And then this diagram here, we talked about the wiring. We just want to make sure that we wire up this correctly. So this side over here is going to plug into the flight controller and we're going to follow the diagram here. So red wire is your power, black wire is your ground, white wire is your transmit line, yellow wire is your receive line, and the green wire is your video ground. So on your Cadex Vista system, it's actually labeled just behind the antenna. This first pad here is S-Bus, so we're not going to use that pad because we removed the purple wire, um, but we're going to use the remaining pads. And when we solder this in place on the Vista system, I actually want to be able to uh, not have so much wire. So I think I'm going to trim an inch off of that and route that inside the frame. That's about good right there and then we'll strip and tin those wires. I'll tell you what, I'm getting good at those 
stripping wires. Did all five at once. Pfft. Can't get better than that. And next thing we'll do is we'll actually tin our Caddx Vista pads. Sometimes these are quite tiny. You really have to be careful putting your iron in there and make sure you're not going to burn electronics. But we'll go nice and slow and just pick our pads and throw some solder on there. Again, avoiding that S-Bus pad because we're not actually going to use that. So since I'm right-handed, I like to start with the furthest pad away from me. And that just makes for easy soldering so my iron doesn't actually contact two pads at the same time. So I'll start with this uh, video wire here. Oh, this should be actually ground. Let's verify that. Yeah, the green wire is ground. So that's going to go to the ground pad. The next one is going to be yellow. And that's going to be our transmit line. Now, this is transmit on, on the Vista system. So this wire is actually going to go to the receive port on the flight controller. And if you solder the receive and transmit backwards, uh, the communication is not going to work. So make sure that transmit goes to receive and receive goes to transmit. And the white wire is receive and that goes to the transmit on the flight controller. So this is going to be our receive pad. And then the next one is going to be ground. And the next one is going to be voltage. There we go. You know what? It's kind of nice that they actually laid these wires out in line. So as long as you solder the wires in line, you should be okay. But just make sure you follow the diagram. Now that that's soldered up, let's, uh, let's go ahead and plug this into the flight controller. I'm just going to route this cable, kind of twist it a little bit to soak up some of that distance and length in the wire. And then I'm going to plug it into the flight controller, making sure that the red wire goes to voltage. So we'll lift this guy up. And let's just verify against our diagram. So 9 volts is what it's going to be powered off of. And that's the flight controller output. And that's on the side of the USB. So the USB is over here, and voltage is this pin right here. So voltage is here, and S bus is over on this side. So we'll put the red wire over here, and we're good there. Slide that guy back on there. And last thing we need to do is just mount this to the top plate and run a zip tie through it. We'll take the top plate here. I think what I'm going to do, I'm going to have the USBs come out the same side. So for the flight controller, the USB is going to be on the right. On the CADEX system, the USB is going to be on the right as well. And we're going to take this top plate and just double-sided tape right there in the center of the stack. And we'll just fold that guy straight in half. We'll stick that right to the top piece. Yeah, there we go. So I think we'll mount it straight in the center just like that. Just kind of press that guy down and then we'll run some zip ties just to kind of hold it in place. And the zip ties there just to kind of prevent it from moving a little bit, but that double-sided tape is going to do a lot of the work for us. And then we'll stick this second zip tie right on top. And we'll run it through here. So we'll cut those remaining excess zip ties there. Let's see if we got some clearance. So we're going to take our standoffs, mount those standoffs on there. Put our screws back in. These are 35 millimeter standoffs and they should give us enough clearance to clear the flight stack. Because really, there's really no other way to mount this Vista system unless you have taller standoffs. 
we got a little bit of a tight space in here. So it helps to have these taller standoffs. All right, the moment of truth. Let's see if this fits. So it looks like we have plenty of clearance. Uh, just take note that when you when you mount your Vista unit, you'll want to mount it just a little bit forward because uh, the zip tie is going to sit in front of the screws. You can see here, if I had mounted my Vista unit uh, just a couple centimeters backwards, that zip tie would have contacted the screws. So we don't want that. But that looks pretty good. Let's move on to mounting the camera and getting this thing configured. So we're going to take our old standoffs here that have those TPU mounts for the analog video. And we're going to remove those guys and actually reuse those mounts. We'll take those guys off. Should be able to slide those guys right off. And then since I want the camera to sit inside of the frame, I'm going to mount these guys right here. And then put this one here. We should be able to just screw those guys right in. Oh yeah, it's a great fit. Yeah, this is such a nice upgrade. Oh yeah, that's nice. Okay, last thing we gotta do is just mount the zip tie uh, to hold this antenna in place and we'll run that out the backside. So right here, just like we did prior to the analog video, we'll just run a zip tie through these two holes and uh, secure that antenna. Yeah, it's beautiful. So we'll just put these remaining Teflon screws that we took off originally back on the flight controller just to hold it down in place. And since the zip tie is actually on the back side, I'm going to install these two Teflon nuts on the front side so it doesn't interfere. Tuck those wires in there, put the screws on. Oh yeah, that fits great. Yeah, it's going to be a huge upgrade to this build. So a couple things we got to do next is register our air unit using the DJI FPV Assistant 2 Series. And we'll leave links down in the video description. Just follow the instructions, plug in your air unit, and register and create an account. So once you have your air unit registered, last thing we need to do is connect it to Betaflight and configure the port that the Cadex Vista system is connected to. We'll plug in the USB cable, and then we'll hit Connect. And over here on the Ports tab, we need to enable UART4 with the MSP protocol because that's what our Vista system is connected to. And lastly, we need to disable the peripheral for the smart audio that we're using on our analog video since that's removed. And then just click Save and Reboot. And we'll hit Connect one more time. And over here in the OSD section, what you'll likely need to do since it was set up on analog is you'll just need to reorientate some of these parameters to fit within the aspect ratio of the DJI goggles. Um, that's pretty easy to do. Just plug in your goggles, plug in your drone, and look at the OSD, and then go and organize your OSD items on the screen to fit. Thank you guys for joining us here on Drone Doc Episode 6, where we showed you how to upgrade your budget build to digital video. I look forward to bringing you guys more content in the future. Thank you for all the love and support on the previous videos, and we'll see you guys next week. Drone Duck out. Thank you.